Hey guys, this is Doug with FellowshipOfTheMartyrs.com coming to you uh, testing out the new camera on my MacBook Pro that was donated a couple months ago, a few months ago, uh, uh, okay, back in December, and uh, but the camera never did work, and so we finally got to the Apple Store and got it working, I think, so we're going to record a quickie video. I, uh, I just wanted to uh, share with everybody how good God is and how excited I am about uh, the new office and everything and about what God is doing and how the Lord is moving to bring some synergy and connectivity uh, in, in with the bride and, and uh, it's really beautiful. Um, yesterday I, I, I had uh, the great pleasure of getting to spend some time praying and chatting with Gary and Monica Dennington from TikTok Ministries who were here in Kansas City and um, wanted to stop by and talk. And we seem to share a lot of the same enemies and uh, say a lot of similar things and get complained about by basically the same people. And uh, so, you know, uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, some specific things on the agenda maybe we'll talk about later. But uh, I just wanted to share with everybody how much I enjoyed them and have seen some of Monica's videos uh, in the past. I know Gary's behind the scenes mostly, but I, I know it's a joint effort. But um, uh, I, I guess I'm making this video because I don't want it to seem like I'm just constantly poking at everybody. Now, I do feel like there's times when the Lord calls me to make a video about what's wrong with Todd Bentley or Mike Bickle or this or that or, or Calvinism or uh, Catholicism or, or whatever. And I try very to be very careful not to call people heretics or cult leaders or whatever like that, but simply say, okay, technically, biblically, okay, this is not right here, this thing, not quite right. And I need to be careful, something, something's not right there. Now, um... And I, I appreciate and respect when somebody does a video about me and they have a technical point or a biblical point or something like that, and they can back it up with facts and it's based on actual things that have actually happened, not hearsay or gossip or lies or whatever. Um, and uh, I, I, I tend to, I, I've made some very positive videos about other parts of the body of Christ. It's just that they're all dead. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty affirming and encouraging of, of John G. Lake and, and, and uh, Watchman Nee and Smith Wigglesworth and stuff. And I think to some degree it's a self-protection thing because they're not going to just pop out of the grave and then say something crazy and get tattoos and a Harley and punch people in the face. So if you kind of endorse them, you can have some comfort level that it's a closed book and, and you can look at the totality and okay, maybe they weren't perfect and this or that thing I didn't like, but at least they're not going to just horribly embarrass all of us uh, yet since they're not here anymore. Uh, I think with Keith Green, everybody really, really liked Keith Green after he was dead, but he was a real loose cannon when he was alive and, and uh, there were some people in the music industry and in the Christian music industry and others that maybe not outwardly, but somewhere inside, they were like, the guy's dead. That saves us a lot of trouble. He was really getting to be a thorn in our side. And, and they wouldn't admit it, I'm sure. But uh, we have seen so many different parts of the body go sour that you don't want to hit your wagon to anybody for fear that they're going to get twisted, you're going to get related to them, and then they're, you're going to go down in flames with them. So we've, we've got to all kind of keep our distance a little bit. And yet that's exactly the opposite of what God wants. And somebody has to make a move the right direction. Somebody has to come out and say, you know what, it, 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 she's my brother. <laughs> she, she, wait, wait. She's my sister. He's my brother. Period. Period. And uh, you ought not to mess with them. And uh, 
I don't know how exactly it'll happen in process. I, I, I know I, my little brother, David, always got himself into trouble. He just had a mouth, and he would tell stories, and the stories got bigger every time, and, and, and it was really entertaining, and he was life of the party, but he, he would just get himself into trouble because somebody would say, you made that up, and he would swear that he didn't. <laughs> And next thing you know, there's a rumble and some kid is beating up on him and whatever. And I don't know how many times in my life, you know, growing up in Mexico, I'd, I'd have to pull somebody off of him. And he'd always be mad because he had him right where he wanted him. And he really didn't enjoy the time in Mexico because the Mexican kids kept beating him up. And, and uh, he thought it was, you know, something about Mexico. But then we came back to the States and the American kids kept beating him up. And I'd get off the bus right after he got off his bus, and sure enough, they'd be on the grass rolling around, and some kid on top of him, and I'd have to pull him off. And I was, you know, older brother, four years older, and he'd always be mad because he had him right where he wanted him and everything. But uh, that's what older brothers are supposed to do. Um, shoot, I remember one guy in the neighborhood, I don't even remember his name now, but he was 12 years old, and he was like 6'3 and 250 pounds of solid muscle. I mean, football coaches were recruiting him, uh, you know, when he was in middle school, they were already planning on him playing in high school and stuff. He's a huge kid, bigger than me at the time. And I was four years older than him. He was the same age as my brother and some kind of out of control testosterone thing. And I remember one time he, he had some kind of club, like a, the size of a baseball bat with big old nails poking through it every which direction. And I don't know what my brother had said, but this kid was mad, and he was twice David's size. And I hear screaming in the backyard, and this kid is waving this club with spikes in it around, chasing my brother around the yard. Well, I look out the back window, and I know i got to go do something. But he's way bigger than me, and... So in, in the heat of the moment at the time, uh, I, I didn't trust my angels as much as I do now, but my dad had a 22 rifle uh, antique octagonal barrel 22 rifle over the mantle in the living room. And so I'm looking out the back window and I just grabbed this 22 uh, pump pump action, I mean not pump, but you know the, the crank ones. No, it had a pump, it had a pump. Uh, 22 octagonal barrel and I race out the back kitchen door and I'm down in the backyard, and uh, this kid is, I get between him and my brother and say, get off my property. And and I'm holding the gun, and he don't want to move, and he takes a move toward me. So I pointed at him and uh, say, get off my property right now. <laughs> get out of my yard or our yard or whatever I said, I don't remember exactly, but... He, he kind of stands there, and he's thinking, and he's whatever, and he's trying to decide if I'm going to do anything. And he leans toward me, and I pump it, and I'm pointing it at him, and I know I got nothing. <laughs> it's not loaded. There's no pumping it twice to scare him twice as much. It's not going to do any good. I've just spent the last little scare tactic I have. After this, all I have is to turn it around and beat him with the gun stock because there's nowhere else to go. But I look real serious, and I'm, I'm giving him my best poker face, and he has to kind of weigh out, you know, what he's going to do. And, and he backs down and harumphs and, and walks off. And uh, I take my brother in the house and lecture to him for a while about never, ever doing whatever he did again. <laughs> I, uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know uh, Pastor Barron from Out to Pastor Ministries in Springfield, Ohio. He was a serious, serious 1% biker. He was, well, I don't want to tell his testimony too much, but when I first met him and we were out driving around, he said, I just want you to understand, if we get pulled over for anything, you know, roll through a stop sign, have a signal out, whatever, the cops are going to come. They're going to take my ID. They're going to go back to the car. They're going to look my, up my NCIC. They're going to come back. They're going to call three other cars. They're going to come back with guns loaded, get us out of the car, lean us over the trunk, and handcuff us for their protection. And they'll be very nice, 
<laughs> while they say, Mr. Selig, this is for our protection and we're just going to handcuff you now because his known associates include every big hell's angel bandito bad guy you can think of, eight degree black belts, permits to carry automatic weapons and all kinds of stuff. And even though he doesn't have a record and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have warrants or anything, he looks real bad on paper. Anyway, the benefit to me of hanging around with the bikers has been Baron has sort of run me through some of what a probate goes through. See, uh, 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 when you're trying out for a biker gang, and, and I'm not talking about a motorcycle enthusiast club. I'm talking about a biker gang. When you want to be in a biker gang, a real true one percenter, you're going to probate and you're going to have to do all kinds of stuff. And you're going to have to wash the older members' bikes, and you're going to pretty much have to do whatever they tell you, and they're going to run you through a gauntlet and beat you, and you're going to have to go by yourself into the other guy's clubhouse and take a whooping and whatever. And one of the things they teach you is you never, ever, ever let your colors touch the ground. So if you're wearing your jacket with your patch on the back, no way, no how does that patch get dirty. No way, no how does that patch touch the ground unless you are unconscious or dead. And and Baron would talk about how he saw probates get punched in the face, hit with a baseball bat, and spin on the way down to land on their chest instead of landing on their back because they it was that important. And they, they make it real clear, real clear, if you're in a bar of the opposing gang in their clubhouse and one of your guys tells a story about how he has a 1964 pan shovel whatever head that does 400 miles an hour and everybody thinks he's full of crap and wants to beat him up, you stand right next to him and say, yes, he absolutely does. I've seen him do it. And you go down swinging with him. Now, later on, you take him back to your clubhouse and you say, sucker, don't you ever lie like that again and get me into that kind of mess. But in front of the opposing team, you back him up. You back him up. And you beat it out of him later. <laughs> There's something to be said for that. I know they take care of their own. A biker has an accident and he's crippled, paralyzed. They're going to have rallies. They're going to raise money. They're going to take care of you. They're going to they're gonna make you a trike so you can get back in the wind. They're going to do whatever they can to take care of your family if you get killed or whatever. You know, if, if, if something bad goes down, they will fix it. The point of all this is, it's sad to say, but I think they're better at it than the church. We have divided even to the point where sometimes the remnant that knows they're the remnant doesn't really want to connect with somebody else for fear that they might go sour and bring us down. I offered when Todd Bentley was twisting in the wind, if he wanted to come rehab here, would take him. And he would have actually learned some repentance and some fear of the Lord. And, and I think, uh, been equipped and prepared better than going to Rick Joyner's place where he basically got affirmed to keep doing whatever he was doing. I've reached out my hand to join with um, the, the house of prayer that's being established here in Liberty. They weren't sure whether it would hurt their reputation more to be associated with me or my reputation more to be associated with them. But either way, they're in Liberty and they love Jesus. And if they want to have a 24-7 prayer room and they don't have anywhere to do it, I, I got space here at the Garrison Center. I'll let you have it for free. I want more prayer. I want more people that love Jesus. We'll work out our differences later. I know that the remnant is going to gather. I know that these lonely little sheep that have been afflicted, that have been whipped and beaten and whatever, that have taken a beating, are going to come together. And I know that some of them don't want to because it's bad enough when I take a beating for things I said or I'm accused of saying, but I don't really want to take a beating for something somebody else said and all I did was be nice. 
all I did was favorite them on my channel or 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 you know send somebody to look at one of their videos or whatever and then I get inundated with what's wrong with that guy okay so here's the deal somebody's got to do it and I don't know that I'm the first one and I don't know that I'm the only one with this kind of heart but you know what I really like Monica and Gary Dennington I really do I got no beef with TikTok Ministries I don't have to agree with them on everything and I don't but I don't disagree with them on anything that matters not really not any primary issues, not about Jesus, not about resurrection, salvation, the gifts of the Spirit, anything. I, I'm all good with TikTok Ministries. And I want to encourage the people watching my channel, if you're not already subscribed to that channel, go check them out. See what the Lord tells you. See if it doesn't, if, if the Lord doesn't use Monica and Gary's teachings to, to grow you somehow. There's a lot of stuff on there. Now, I understand that next week I could twist up into a crazy pretzel you know and 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 start saying crazy stuff and think I'm the last days Elijah and who knows what you should immediately stop listening to me and I recognize that this is a war and that there are casualties and that the enemy wants to take us out and that at any moment somebody that was an elder might not be an elder anymore Somebody that was hearing God might be hearing something else. I have seen plenty of people here that I walked alongside that were shiny and beautiful and dangerous, mighty weapons get completely co-opted and taken out. <sighs> so what do you do? Do you isolate yourself from everyone for fear that something might happen and they might get taken out and you might get blamed for it somehow or associated with them. I think we need to change the culture. I think we need to change our understanding of all of this stuff. And I want to be real clear. I am a one-person ministry. And I am willing to walk alongside a whole bunch of other one-person ministries. Now, Gary and Monica are, are, are one cup. But ultimately, they're still going to have to stand in judgment individually. So I understand that at the, at the end of it all, there's just going to be me at the final judgment. Everybody's going to stand alone. Now, if, if I put a video up of somebody that's here or been here or came to visit here or, or, or somebody's video that I like, I've got Paul Washer's videos favorited. I don't agree with him on everything. I've got videos about what's wrong with him. But I know he's my brother. My vision all along has simply been to have a family reunion where all the brothers and sisters could get together, bring whatever God gave you. Read the poem the Lord gave you. Tell about the dream the Lord gave you. Play, play the guitar. Uh, sing the song the Lord gave you. Something. Let's, us, let's just pray together. Hit our knees. Cry out for how bad things are. Ask the Lord to turn and love one another. But there's a fear that, that if I get too close to this or that ministry... I'm going to be associated with, ever, with whatever fool thing they did. You know what? I like Yoke Up. I've talked to Yoke Up on the phone, and I like Yoke Up. And, and I got no beef with him. Have I ever messaged him and said, dude, I think you're going a little too far here? Yeah, I have. Did he listen? Did he take it to heart? I don't know. Not my problem. I said what I said. I love him. I love Jeff and Carolyn, and, and I know that God's doing a work there. I know that they're going out and preaching to truckers, that they're giving away food, that they're sacrificing. I don't have to agree with them on everything. <sighs> I could make a long list. I like... Uh, 
I really sincerely love Texas Author One. I encourage you to go check out her website, her blog talk radio show, uh, her Wings of Prophecy blog. Glenda Lomax is a beautiful, sweet sister that I love with all my heart. Would take a bullet for her. Whatever, if she called and said, I need whatever, I'd be there for her. And I believe she'd be there for me. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what we disagree on, but whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I want you to go check out her channel, Texas Author One, Edge O One Two, Christopher L, lots of folks. I guess I'm making this video to tell you that I'm going to. I've done book reviews. I've encouraged you to go check out this book, read the Heavenly Man. Go check out Gospel for Asia and different ministries that are doing good stuff. And 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 some of some folks have taken me up on that and said, you know, that, that book really affected me. That that really was valuable to me. You know? And these are some of the people that have been valuable to me. And I don't care if they freak out and go sour tomorrow. I don't care if they become the Antichrist. Today, I see Jesus in them. And I love them. And if they get twisted out of control and become the Antichrist, I'm still going to love them. Because I'm commanded to. And we're not talking about ecumenicalism. We're talking about believers that love the Lord, that are trying to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. And I want to help. If God's doing something there and I can cooperate and participate, and I, I want to help. When Pastor Derek from the way, Kansas City, said, hey, we're going to Joplin. We need some food. Absolutely. I loaned him my trailer. We loaded it to the gills. You know, had to get the trailer hitch flipped because the back end of the van was hanging down, you know, <laughs> and whatever. Want to borrow the truck? Fine. You know, want to come sleep on my sofa? Fine. Want my last bowl of rice? Fine. God's just going to give me more. He is going to honor the heart that I had to seek unity, to seek the love of the brethren, to try to be one, whether they hold it together or not. It says they march shoulder to shoulder, and if one falls, somebody will take their place. In another place, it says that they march shoulder to shoulder. If one falls, his neighbors pick him up. Which is which? I don't know. I've seen some fall and I picked them up. And I've seen some fall and we kept walking. I don't know. Only the Lord knows. The point is, we're shoulder to shoulder whether we want to admit it or not, whether we like it or not. And that's just the way it is. And, and when I hear voices Run in parallel. The same revelation I got, the same understanding I have, the, the, the Holy Spirit explaining things to them about city church, about the gifts of the Spirit, about, about the need to about the need to love. Okay, I get it. What do you need? Let's go. How can I help? TikTok Ministries is there is a user on YouTube for Monica and Gary. They got more subscribers than I do. I don't know that that uh, my traffic will help or make any difference at all. And I, I'm not doing it so that anybody else will return the favor. I understand that for some of them, it will hurt their ministry to use my name. It will do them harm and it will shut doors to be associated with me at all because of the hatred and the vile things that have been said and the, and the vicious lies that are out there about me. But I'm not sure if there's more vicious lies about me or Monica. <laughs> when a pastor, <laughs> pastor, came to a giveaway in the park where we were giving away food and clothes and said, Doug, my friend, I just want you to know that God has revealed to me personally that you're Satan. 
I said, possessed by Satan, Bob? No, you are Satan. <laughs> I'm like, that's insane, Bob. Tell everybody. <laughs> Any press is good press. They call Jesus Beelzebub, you know. Praise God. He Five years later, he still has not budged and still insists that I am Satan incarnate. Okay? People follow this guy. People listen to this guy. Uh, that's how bad things are. That's how little discernment there is in the world, in, in, in this thing we call church. I don't know that Monica and Gary are right about everything. I don't know that where they're going is 100% exactly where the Lord wants them to go. I don't know how courses might change or things might adjust or whatever, and I don't care. I don't care. I know that I love them, and I know that I'm one with them in Christ, and that's all there is to it. That's just all there is to it. I feel the same way about Paul Washer. I would love to hit my knees and cry alongside of him for the state of things and pray and beg and plead and spend all night talking about this and that. And maybe there's some revelation I have that would help him. Maybe I don't maybe I don't understand him like I should. Maybe he doesn't come across on the videos the way he does in person and I, I would love him more to just get to talk to him. Maybe he'd love me more. I don't know that he knows my name. I just know something's gotta change. And there's there's a sort of a, a thing on YouTube, and, and maybe it's all over the internet, maybe it's in ministries all over, where it, it just, people take enough shots. The ones that are obeying, they take enough shots of their own without having to take shots on behalf of other people too. But isn't that the essence of the gospel? I mean, isn't that the whole point? That... Jesus took everybody else's shots. Nothing, nothing that they said against him was justified or right. Nobody had any right to, to whip him or crucify him or stone him. He took it for me. Well, so what if I take some shots for Monica? So, let me be real clear. Monica is my sister. You mess with Monica, you're going to mess with me. For whatever that's worth. So, I don't know how the Lord might have me pull somebody off of Monica that's trying to beat her up. And, and I'm not saying that Monica's angels aren't perfectly capable of whooping anybody. <laughs> I don't know that she really needs any help from me. But that's my heart. And when somebody comes someday and sticks a gun to my head and says, tell me where Monica Dennington is or we're going to kill you. <laughs> Dude, I hate this life. I hate this place. I want to go home. Shoot me now. Think about it. I don't know if I said it right, but there's something really deep in here, something really important, something, something really critical that needs to change. That So I know I left off lots of people, and, and I'll try and get around to it, mention some others later, maybe highlight their pages. If, if everybody shared traffic more, if everybody cross-promoted, it'd be good for everybody. And, and we all have to have some sort of disclaimer saying, okay, I like this guy. I like what he's saying. At any moment, he could wig out, and I accept no responsibility after that. But right now, I, I really think they're onto something, and I think it might be good for you to check it out. We'll favorite all kinds of other stupid videos. We'll favorite, you know, 
little kids biting their little brother's finger and whatever and you know I, whatever I know it's coming I know unity's coming I know it's going to be messy the church is always messy the church is always messy how are you going to learn long suffering and patience and brotherly kindness without frustrating people around and things that don't go your way but we love anyway we press forward anyway we take chances anyway and we step out on that limb and trust the Lord to catch us no matter what happens That's what I have to say about that. Thanks for listening. I don't know how this applies in your life. Maybe people at work. Maybe Christians that you know. That you haven't supported them. You, you, you've watched while they witness to your co-workers. But you keep your mouth shut because it's too embarrassing and you don't want to be associated with them. Maybe the church across the street is, is planting a garden, but you don't want to go help with their garden because your church isn't doing one, and you're not a member of that one. Maybe somebody else has got a food pantry, but you don't want to go in there because they're Pentecostals and you're a Baptist. Yeah, but the people need feed, need to be fed. They, they Stuff needs to get done. And it seems like the cross isn't as important as our teams. And I don't I don't think that's right. I got a patch on my back. I'm wearing Jesus' colors. And I, Monica is too. And Yokup is too. And Glenda and other people are too. And I get it. And I see it. And I recognize that patch. And that patch is what matters. Those are the stripes of Jesus. That is the blood of my Savior. And I get it. Do you get it? Is that blood enough to cover the other, the other stuff? To overlook the differences on predestination and free will and this and that? Or is the blood of Jesus that you see covering that person, the fruit coming out of their life, the Christ speaking out of their, is, is that not enough to overwhelm your, your sense of how communion ought to be done or, or whatever? If you don't love the brethren, the love of God is not in you. Loving the brethren doesn't mean go. Be warm. Be well fed. We'll pray for you. Loving the brethren means whatever I got yours. You can have my last grain of rice. Come sleep in the bunk next to mine. Whatever happens, I'll be there for you. Communion is a blood oath. Not just between us and Jesus, but to each other. We all share a cup. And he says, love one another as I have loved you. And he, and he doesn't say, oh yeah, you know, I, I love Doug, but I'm not publicly going to take a stand for him and let everybody know that I love him because uh, that he's kind of a hot potato. No. That's not my Jesus. That's not my Jesus. And, and, if, and if to some degree I've done that, up to now, I'm sorry. I repent, and I'm sorry, and I'm going to change. What about you? Thanks for listening. Lots more at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. And a whole bunch of other websites from a whole bunch of other voices saying the same stuff. God bless you.